All right, I've got an unboxing video to do today. I've got two fantastic FX guns that have just arrived here. Uh, but before we get started, I want to make two things very clear. First of all, we're doing this one indoors in my lounge because it's raining like crazy outside. Second of all, I've had such a bad fever the past few days. I should be in bed, but these arrived a few hours ago. I was planning to you know, leave them under my bed, then take them out tomorrow and film an unboxing video. But the more I, I stared at these boxes, the, the more I realized I've got to get this done today. So let's just, let's just do it. Let's open these things up. Let's check what's inside. And then I want to talk about some of the extras that I've, that I've got for this gun um, and my plans for these guns. Because although they are both bullpups, they are both going to be used for very different purposes. I'm going to set them both up very differently. So this one on top here, this looks like the, the Wildcat. Let's get it open. Ooh. Those of you who have opened boxes of, of new guns that have arrived, know the feeling. You don't get much more excited than this. Fast forward this part. Okay, there we go. You guys will probably see this before I do. Or maybe not. <laughs> so on top here we've got the uh, FX instruction manual and it looks like this is kind of a, a general instruction manual for the whole range of, of FX rifles. So it's not just specific to the Wildcat, but it's got all the information you need for all the different kinds of magazines, all the different kinds of fill probes, all the different kinds of breech blocks, everything is in here. We've got two layers of foam, looks very well packaged, and there she is. Oh, so nice. So, as you can see here, I asked for the, the Woodstock version of the Wildcat, and there's a good reason for that. Now, when I did my, my Wildcat review of a gun that I borrowed from a friend a few months ago, I said that I really like the uh, synthetic stock version of the gun and in that video I also said that I probably wouldn't get a wooden stock version even if it was available. Well I went to SHOT Show a few months ago and I saw the, the wooden stock version up close and I immediately changed my mind. I've always been one for the wooden rifles, wooden stock guns and this one was just so nicely made, so smooth, the grain on the wood is quite nice and it's got this wonderful little FX logo engraved in here, which is something that the synthetic stock version doesn't have. So this is the Wildcat, and oh my gosh, it's so light, so pointable. Oh, that's fantastic. Can't wait to get a scope on this thing and start shooting. But we've got another gun to look at, so let's put this one aside for now. Put this box away. And this one is something I'm even more excited about. So let's grab my knife again and let's do some more fast forwarding. And there you go. Fantastic. Beautiful solid carry case. This is going to keep this gun well protected and um, it's quite compact as well. You can see folded away really small and that's because this is a takedown rifle. We'll get to the review later but got some something to cut through here. Cable ties. There you go. Moment of truth. Oh, nice, very nice. Oh, owner's manual, not gonna worry about that now. Let's put that aside. We've got, aha, fantastic. So I asked for, asked for a spare bottle because one of the great things about the impact is that you can, you can unscrew this, this carbon fiber bottle um, 
in the field. You don't need to degas the gun before you unscrew it. And that opens the door for carrying spare cylinders around with you. If you're going to be hunting, let's just say, shooting pigeons all day, you're going to be taking hundreds of shots. Instead of carrying an air cylinder with you, you can just carry one of these. So, ask for the spare cylinder. Here it is. That is absolutely fantastic. Just keep that there for now. Full probe. Barrel and extendable shroud, which is, I think, a very innovative design. Uh, there's only one barrel here. This is the 22 caliber version. And then we've got magazine. This is, as far as I know, I think it's I think it's either a 16 or 18 shot magazine. I think the 22 caliber is uh, 18 shots, which is quite a lot. Another spare magazine. It's great. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Aha. And there are two spare magazines for the Wildcat. So stoked. Alright, so let's actually check the gun itself. So this is the... Black impact. Uh, I just immediately preferred the black to the silver the moment I saw it. For some reason, it just looks smaller. Uh, if I put two photos of them next to each other, you might know what I mean. Uh, or maybe it's just me. But the black impact looks extremely well made, looks solid. Uh, obviously, the cylinder screws in the front here, like this. And the barrel, Let's see if I can get this right. Barrel goes in here. Loosen this piece at the back. Barrel slides in. You feel it lock into place. Then you tighten it down, and that's it, that's the gun. And I'll tell you something, although this is a gun that's almost entirely made of metal, it's much lighter than you, than you expect. When I picked this thing up for the first time, I was very surprised. And I think that's, that's partly got to do with the, the carbon fiber bottle, but also this is aluminium. There's very little steel on here, so the whole gun is, is very light. It's extremely short, very pointable, fantastic. Right, so now that we've looked at both guns, I've been planning to get hold of these guns for so long. In, um, in I think it was June last year, I did a review of the Calibre Gun Cricket, and immediately I decided that I wanted to get myself a bullpup to add to my collection of guns. But I didn't want to get the Cricket because immediately I just wasn't too happy with the build quality of that gun. Uh, it, it was accurate, but you could just see the way that the gun was put together and the materials that were used. I didn't really want to spend that much money on a gun that wasn't built too well. And then, about three months ago, a friend of mine bought a Wildcat and he lent that gun to me. And from the moment I picked that thing up, I knew that that was the gun I wanted to get. I did a review of the Wildcat and in that video I said that Although I really liked the Wildcat, I was starting to fall in love with this gun, the Impact. Just because it's so adjustable that I know I would have endless fun with this thing. Just fiddling around with it, getting um, the best accuracy I can possibly get by, you know, changing a few settings, uh, getting that, that sweet spot where, the, where I can get a good shot count and still get a decent amount of power. It's just a lot of interesting things that I know I could do with this gun. And eventually I uh, just decided that I need both the Wildcat and the Impact because they're, so, they're two extremely different guns. This one is a very simple gun. It's, uh, there's no fat or no fluff on it, if you know what I mean. It's just, it's got one job and it does it really well. Whereas this one is, is a very complicated gun. It's totally different. The breech block is, is forward instead of all the way back. Um, so it feels very different to shoot. It's very adjustable, gives me more shots. So there's nothing similar about these two guns other than the fact that they're both bullpups. 
So I've got these two guns and I've had months to plan what I'm going to do to them. So first of all, in terms of scopes, I've already decided I'm going to put this Hawk Frontier on the impact. It's very light, it's got an incredible quality glass. Basically, it is the best quality scope that I have at the moment. So it should go on my best quality gun or the most accurate gun that I have and I think that's going to be the impact. Hawk Frontier and I'm going to use these, uh, I've got these FX No Limit mounts simply because the scope's going to be fairly high above the barrel and the No Limit mounts will allow me to tilt the scope a little bit forward so that I can maximize the amount of clicks I can get out of my turrets. So No Limit mount and Hawk Frontier on the impact and then I've got these fairly low, I think these are sports match mounts, these are low mounts and I'm going to be attaching, I haven't decided yet, either this FX6-18 scope or the good old trusty Hawk Sidewinder to the Wildcat. Now the reason I haven't been able to decide which scope to fit on yet is because the Sidewinder has a much better reticle, better turrets, but it's, it's much longer, it's a fair bit heavier, and the, the optical clarity on the scope is actually worse, believe it or not, than on the FX scope. The FX scope surprised me. Um, I saw it at, at the RWA show in Nuremberg first, and I looked through it, and the quality of the glass was just much better than the Sidewinder. So I've got a tough decision to make. I'll probably you know do some trials with both, and whichever one is better suited to the type of shooting I'm going to be doing with the Wildcat, that's the one I'll take. And then, I also got a few other accessories for both of these scopes. First thing I'm going to do on the Wildcat is fit some sling swivel studs and attach a Deben Tilt bar pod. This is a, a solid bar pod, but it comes in much cheaper than the um, Harris. I don't see a point in paying double for a Harris if this thing is absolutely solid. So that's the, the Deben bar pod. It's going to go on the Wildcat. I'll put studs on the, the back of the Wildcat as well and, and fit a sling, see how that works out. And then what I have here, something fairly interesting. Um, so the, the Wildcat full probe, I'll put an insert in here, but it's got threads at the back, which means that if I wanted to fill between the Impact and the Wildcat, they have different full probes. Um, which means I'd have to be unscrewing this thing all the time, which obviously would suck. So what I did is I asked Frederick Axelson from FX for one of these. This is a um, Wildcat fill probe, but it's got a male foster fitting on the back, which means that the impact fill probe, which is just the standard female foster, the Wildcat fill probe can fit right in like that, which means that I won't have to be unscrewing anything um, if I want to fill both of these guns over and over again, you know, I just have to plug it in and there you go. That'll be make it much easier for me. Um, what else do I have? I bought a, what is this thing called again? An Atlas bar pod for the impact. This basically clamps onto this tiny piece of, of Picatinny rail here. Let's see if I can get it on quickly. There you go. I'll tighten that up later, but basically the, the reason I, I would be willing to pay so much more for the scope, the Atlas is so expensive, the reason I'd be willing to pay more is because the Atlas can do this. It can bend at about 45 degrees forward and that's great because if you're shooting off the bench with an impact, you want the legs to be as far forward as possible to get extra stability and if they were going straight down, it just wouldn't be, you know, far enough forward and the gun would not be as stable, as stable as I'd like it. Okay, what else? I've got this grip. Um, I saw the, the, I felt the grip on the impact at both the SHOT Show and the IWA Show. And this particular one just felt a little bit too small for my hands. Um, I've got pretty big hands, so I wanted something a little bit bigger. Nice thing about the impact is that you can fit AR-15 style grips on it. And those things, there's so many of them available. So I got this one, this is the Ergo grip. I believe this is actually the exact grip that is on certain versions of the Impact. I think you can get the, the Impact with this grip as standard. Um, it's just a, a 
chunkier grip and it's got this lovely stippling on the side. So I'm going to be fitting this on the impact. And lastly, I have one of these. Um, now I don't know if you've seen Ted's review of the impact, but he uses one of these. This is a fixed silencer. So basically, this is not a telescopic shroud. This will just screw right onto the barrel. And what's nice about this is that you can actually unscrew these, these tubes at the end. You can shorten it, kind of like on the, the US version of the, the Wildcat. You can add and remove these tubes, these extensions, to get it the exact length that you want it. So I'll be switching between this and the telescopic shroud, depending on what kind of hunting I want to do. If I'm walking through really dense vegetation and I need something really short, I'll use the telescopic shroud, keep it in, and when I get to whatever I want to shoot, just extend it and shoot. But if I'm you know, just doing some long range shooting at the range or uh, doing some hunting that doesn't re require me walking through thick vegetation, I'll probably fit this one because I have a feeling this one's going to be a fair bit quieter. Alright, I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get out and shoot these things over the chronograph right now. Even though I'm very sick and I should be in bed. <laughs> you know the feeling. When you get a new gun, you just want to go out and shoot it. So, thanks for watching. I'll be doing a review, probably of, of just the impact, because I've already done a Wildcat review. Um, and I'll do plenty of hunting of both of these guns. So, expect to see a lot of these in the future. Thanks for watching.